Hi everybody, this is day four of this little video series and on the first day we had a look at the signal delay lines and what we can do with that. On the second day we had the output mixer and the aux mixer so we can mix all our delay lines in all in a lot of different ways with additional plugins on single delay lines and all that stuff. Yesterday we had a look at the input mixer which also had some crazy stuff going on with crossfeed and feedback loops and auxiliary inputs and all that stuff. And today we're going to have a look at even more advanced stuff because of course you can do even more crazy things with that plugin. So here I set up a little delay consisting of two delay lines and it sounds like this. Or if I play a chord. And of course all the parameters can be automated. So when I touch this parameter here, it should say that I touched a panorama knob if I go to the parameters list. Yeah, panorama delay line three. Let's automate that thing. In this case, I want to do an automation from an LFO. So this would be under this point here. And this opens this little window. I click on low frequency oscillator LFO. And now it's still doing the wrong thing because it's on positive. I want it to be centered because a panorama knob is a centered kind of knob. So now we see it's turning left, right, left, right. Let's make that slower. And now we can close this and go here and automate the other knob. But this time I want it to turn in the opposite position. So I flipped the face to a half. And now let's hear how it sounds. But we can not only automate panorama knobs or volume knobs, we can literally automate everything we see in this plugin. So for example, if you need that, you can automate things in the input mixer or in the output mixer, in the cross feed, or even in the delay lines. Let's automate this delay. Now I touched it, it should show up here. Last touched was a delay. And now let's modulate that thing. Of course, I prepared that a bit. So let's enable this automation. And you see, I have a very little strength of only one and a half percent. And this time it's set to positive and it has a little offset. You can see that when I choose this offset somewhere else, it changes. And somehow you have to click and figure out what suits your needs and what to do with these automation things if you want to use this. But now I have this automation done. And now we can hear what happens when we automate the delay time. Or let's do something else. Let's stop that here again. And give it another delay time than this delay line four. And now let's give that some positive feedback. So it will get louder and louder and louder and louder. And this would sound like this. And now it says mode here in the parameters page. So let's say show that. Let's track envelope. Well, and let's turn down that thing. Because on a live input, what I have here from my keyboard, it will also pick up this little keyboard output noise and put that in the feedback loop. So we get this strange effect here. So, okay, let's see this automation thing here. Where well, we have the automation for this mode. And now we can draw automation. 
and let's have a look at this automation thing. We're on clear, jump, drift, and clear again. So in this case, I can play something. It will have a positive feedback loop, which now is cleared, so muted at this point. So if you have the idea of positive feedback loops for effects for uh, risers or anything like that, you can stop them in the automation field in your project. And you don't have to do this for each delay line. You can also click on clear all delay line buffers and also that appears in the parameters list. Clear all delay lines. Okay, now let's see something else. We put the delays to quarter notes, for example, and for quarter triplets. And hear how it sounds, maybe with that drum track in the background. Okay, that's what we would expect here. Maybe put this to left and right a bit for more effect. And now let's remove this automation which we had here because I've made a little tempo automation here. So we're going from 93 BPM to 120 BPM. So when I play back here, you see this range. See here, the BPM rises. And now let's see what happens with the delays. So you see, if you have a tempo synced delay, it will also tempo sync with tempo automation. But that only works if your BPM is set to project BPM. Because ignoring the project, you can just grab the BPMs and put them to another value. And you can even use the tap button to tap a delay. If you want to go back to the project BPM, simply click project BPM and everything will reset. Well, and that's already it for today. And so long, have fun with the plugins and bye bye.